If you've been following along with the videos in our Carbon Hack 24 series, you've seen how to use the green software impact framework in order to measure website carbon emissions two different ways. The first way is an attributional model in which you measure a metric about the entire system's energy usage and allocate a percentage of that to a particular activity. And you've also seen a consequential model of doing things in which you break things down into their component parts and measure each of those components. The first method is good for reporting, such as in greenhouse gas emissions reports. The second is good for optimization when you want to find a particularly intensive portion of your system and improve upon it. Now, there's a lot of discussion on the best ways to do these things, and some people err on the side of simplicity, which is usually the attributional model of doing things, and some err on the side of fine-grained measurement, which is the consequential method of doing things. In this video, we're going to be looking at both of those approaches, some of the concerns you might want to look at when trying to measure website energy usage and the various components that go into measurement, as well as reflecting on some feedback from experts in the field that we've heard. We'll take a look at how the impact framework can be used to measure both models, as well as some alternatives. So underneath that attributional model umbrella, let's take a look at the Measure Web Page plugin by Alex Servanson. And the way that this plugin works is that it measures the overall bytes transferred in navigating a website and loading it, and then it passes it off to the CO2JS model to calculate carbon equivalency. So without getting too technical here, let's look at the Measure Web Page plugin and see what it's doing. It's importing a few different modules. We've got the Lighthouse module. It imports Puppeteer, which will do all of the sort of autonomous navigation of our chosen website. And then it's going to call this measure page function and parse out our overall page weight, our resource type weights, which are these various different components of an overall web page's payload. And you can see some of those here. We've got document, style sheet, image, media, font, script, prefetch, and fetch. It's going to pass in our URL that we specified in the manifest. So here we get those calculations of everything, the Lighthouse score and the page weight. And we're passing in a few of our config variables. In this case, we're just passing in the data reload ratio, which is going to help us determine how effectively a website is caching based on how much data is loaded on subsequent reloads of the website. So we're spinning up Puppeteer. We're accounting for things like network timeouts. We're also accounting for what type of device the user is on. Is it a mobile device? Is it desktop? What are the network conditions? Determining what is from cache, what is from service workers, what is from the URL itself. We're simulating that reload. We're even simulating scrolling to the bottom of the page to make sure that anything that's loaded asynchronously gets accounted for on scroll. And that's more or less a synopsis of what's happening inside this Measure Web Page plugin. And again, this is that attributional approach. It calculates the bytes transferred, passes it off to CO2JS, and gives us a carbon equivalency. Thanks to Alex Zerbotson for this great addition to the Impact Firmware plugin ecosystem. Now, on the other hand, if we want to look at that consequential model where we are calculating up each of the different components in the system and trying to account for their carbon usage, we might look towards our getting started repo and the pipeline implemented there. So in this plugin, we're making some observations on traffic from our network. And here we're just using these mock observations, but in practice, we would do actual observations. We're grouping those inputs in this case, by cloud and region. Uh, we're syncing the timestamps on all of those based on their different regions. Then we're gathering information about the specific infrastructure used in serving those websites. So the physical processor, the thermal design power, cloud vendor, as well as the carbon intensity of the grid in the region in which those pages were served via the watt time API. Then we're using something called the TEDS curve, which estimates CPU usage across varying types of CPUs, a calculation that requires the CPU in question, the thermal design power of that CPU, the effective utilization of that resource, and for how long it's being used. And lastly, we implement the operational carbon module, which combines these things to calculate 
energy in kilowatt hours and grid carbon intensity. So while this model is more intricate to implement and more dependent on the many factors that can go into a system's measurement considerations, it does allow us to optimize a bit better and gives us more information into what each component of the system is doing and where there might be room for improvement. So we can take a look at our output files to see the different information that each of these approaches renders given this pipeline. So here we have a timestamp of when a measurement took place. It took place for five seconds. We know what server the measurement happened on, its instance type, its region, who the vendor was, how much the CPU was being utilized, how many virtual CPUs were allocated versus available, the memory, the physical processor, the thermal design power, all of that gets surfaced to us in case we want to make system improvements and we get a carbon estimate. Switch over to the attributional model with the measure web page plugin and look at its output file and we see the website we were looking at, total bytes transferred and how that breaks down in terms of the different resources that the page loaded and we get this operational carbon based on those bytes transferred. So definitely more simplistic, a little more insight into how much of the page load is attributed to different components, but less information about what the server is doing, what the grid is doing, and things like that. So for the sake of better understanding that contextual model, let's take a look at some of the components that would go into a system that we could measure. There are several different categories that the components of measurement of a website fall into. There's the data center, which consists of the compute, memory, storage, and networking involved in delivering website content to the user. And by common estimates, this is about 15% of the total system usage. Then there's the networks themselves. Among networks, you'll find fixed networks as well as mobile networks. And within each of these, there is a base load to establish the network connection as well as a transfer cost for the bytes transferred. Now, this does not scale linearly. There are efficiencies of scale to greater bytes transferred within the network. The bulk of the cost is often within that base load and networks consist of about 14% of the total system usage. The next component are the devices themselves and what happens on those devices. And this consumes a lion's share of the overall system usage, 52%. Under this category, you'll find things like device type, a desktop or a laptop, a tablet or mobile device, the amount of time spent consuming the content, the type of activity happening on that site. So it might be a game, or it might just be a static website. Then there's the content itself. Uh, this could be static content, could be image rich or have videos. It could be serving ads. It could be using AI. All of these things contribute drastically differently to the overall energy usage of that site. And then the last component of the devices is how well this content was engineered, was optimized to use effective caching solutions, to minimize code, to keep code dry, do not repeat yourself, etc. And in the box up top in this diagram, we'll see several different device measurement methods. There is the D impact method, which measures bytes transferred for static content over time. There is using an energy profiler within a browser itself, for example, the Firefox profiler. Mm -hmm. And then there are some people who just say you should look at your cloud spend, and this scales proportionately to the energy emissions for all of the infrastructure you have hosted on the cloud. Now, the last component in the system is the production of all of the components that go into delivering website content to users. That includes the embodied carbon in the chips, the networks, the data centers, the communication devices, and the disposal of all of those things as well. And this is about 19% of the estimated overall system usage. Now, a lot of the basis for the thinking behind that consequential model comes from some research into articles written by Farshad Irani, a digital sustainability consultant that does work with the Green Web Foundation. He wrote two excellent articles, which I encourage you to read, which posit ways to think about estimating website energy usage. This is a bit more of the rationale behind why you might want to measure. But to check our thinking, we reached out to various experts within the field. You'll find links to some of that thinking listed in the description for this video, but the gist of it 
was that there are no easy answers. Many of these people highlighted things we hadn't even thought of, like what a web page is doing when it's simply idling, or even what assumptions are being made within each plugin in the system. For example, the CO2JS model assumes around 52% of emissions are from client-side electricity usage. But that doesn't always match the estimates that are coming from lifetime carbon assessments published by hardware manufacturers, which tend to show device electricity usage at a small fraction, ballpark 10 to 20 percent of overall life cycle carbon emissions of phones and laptops. An opinion we've heard from both the people we talk to and reports we've seen from cloud providers such as Amazon is that cloud spend is one of the better proxies for calculation of energy usage. As one staff site reliability engineer we talked to said, looking at the cloud carbon dashboard within GCP, the carbon costs closely match expenses, meaning the areas we spend the most money on are also producing the most CO2 from a product perspective. In this case, the highest estimate seemed to be networking, which makes sense. Within their company, they spend a ton of ingress and egress traffic from the CDN and services. Things like AI throw an interesting wrench into the mix as well. If you were measuring bytes transferred as a proxy for total emissions on the server side, that would be an oversimplification of what type of information you're processing. You could get similar content and similar network traffic either from something served as a static page or something generated by the GPT 3.5 based AI feature or something even more intensive generated by GPT-4. From research that we've seen, an AI answer to a search query might have around 10 times the emission of a classic text index based search query. The way to account for this, of course, is to actually measure the energy usage of your backend directly rather than trying to infer it from bytes on the wire. Thus, we can see why measurement is so important. If LLMs really do take off and end up using 10 times the energy of traditional queries and they don't reduce overall demand, this could cause huge multipliers in total power consumption of the internet that are sometimes forecast. The last thing I wanted to cover is the advice we heard from multiple people to not just look at measuring current systems, but look at how to more intelligently and intuitively and efficiently architect them in the first place. There are two resources we recommend for this. The first is the MDN curriculum, which teaches the fundamentals of building accessible, semantic, and well-architected front-end solutions. And the second is the Green Software for Practitioners course from the Green Software Foundation which teaches you things like basics on carbon efficiency, measurement, and climate considerations. While this can all be a lot to take in, we hope that it inspires you to come up with your own methods for accounting for the energy usage of your system and continuing to improve on measurement tools such as those present in the impact framework. To learn more about the framework, check out the other videos in this playlist or check the links in the description. And as always, please don't hesitate to reach out with comments and questions. Thanks for watching.